Okay, let's continue with number 11. So we're looking at work done on a single particle. State the relationship between work and energy in words. Okay, well, we've already looked at that. Uh, uh, if the energy of a system changes, then it is due to work. So work, work is the work is done when there's a change of energy to the system. Okay, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, and by the way, this is equation nine point one. Equation nine point one. If the if the energy doesn't change, then there's no work done. Okay. So let's look at 12. This follows. Does the energy law, this is the energy law, does it apply to closed systems? And what about systems that are not closed? Okay, so a system that is closed, what does that mean? It means no energy, no energy is transferred across the boundary. Okay, so this is the energy law. So if so there's no energy that transfers across the boundary for a closed system. So does this law still apply? Well, yes, the law still applies. This this energy law does still apply. All, all that we're saying in a closed system is that the work equals zero, which means your delta E is zero. But the law still applies. And to systems that are not closed, yes, if the system is not closed, that means that there's an energy, there's energy transfer across the boundary, which means work is done. But in both cases, the law, this law applies. Okay. 13. Equations 9, 8, and 9, 9 are valid only for a particle. Why is that? Okay, what are they? What are those two equations? 9, 8 is work is this is exerted on a particle, okay? A single force exerted on a particle. So the work done is the force multiplied by the displacement uh, of the particle, right? Or work is the sum, right? If there's your particle, you've got many forces acting on this particle. That's the sum, the vector sum, the resultant force, the vector sum of the forces multiplied by whichever direction you have that xf. Okay? So why is this only valid for a particle? Because these equations were derived based on being applied only to a particle. Okay, so... Uh, where was I now? Where where were those? Is it seven? Okay. So remember, what is a particle? This is a very particular word. You, I hope you uh, take note of it. A particle. It's a very particular word. It means it is first of all, it's an idealization, meaning it's it's an approximation of what's happening in real life. But it's any object. If we, uh, it's basically an approximation of an object which we say has no internal structure and no extent in space. Extent in space. So basically we're saying that this has no size, no shape. Uh, the, the implication of this, this is the implication, is that Remember if you apply a force to some object, okay? Basically, two kinds of things can happen. You can speed it up, you can accelerate it, which means you, you change its kinetic energy. But you can also deform it, right? You can also change its shape, which means that you change its internal energy. Well, if we are talking about a particle, then this second option does not exist. Because... There's, it has no extent in space. It's just a dot. It has no internal structure. So the structure cannot change shape. So the only thing that can change, if, we're, if we are idealizing an object as a particle, 
The only thing that can change is our kinetic energy. And those equations we saw work is F external delta X. They were derived for a particle, which means what? Which means that we don't consider our the internal energy to change. Okay. 14. Discuss the similarities and differences in the momentum law and the energy law. The momentum law and the energy law. Okay. The momentum law is delta P equals J. Okay. And here we have delta E equals work. So that's this is the momentum law. That's the energy law. What are the similarities and differences? Similarities... They're both conservation principles. Okay. What does that mean? It means that momentum uh, cannot be destroyed, cannot be destroyed or created. It can only be transferred across the boundary. So the only way that the momentum of a system, your system, can change is if momentum is transferred across the boundary exactly the same principle with uh, energy if you've got a system the only way energy cannot be destroyed or created energy can only be transferred across the boundary the only way a system's energy changes is if there is an energy transfer across the boundary energy cannot be created or destroyed momentum cannot be created or destroyed i think you get the idea the second idea is um, a similarity is uh, for for and, and this just follows on from this um, for momentum an isolated system means that there is no transfer no transfer of energy uh, sorry of momentum um, for energy, uh, you've got a closed system, means no transfer of energy. Okay. Um, third idea is, again, it follows, is that if you are, if there is a transfer of momentum for this guy, then that is called impulse. Impulse. And if there is a transfer for energy, then it's called work, right? If, if there is a delta E, it's called work. If the energy of the system changes, there is work done. What does work mean? It means that there's a force or a, a vector sum, a resultant force, external. And the point of application moves. Right, the actual point that you're applying that, that result in force, it actually displaces. Okay. Uh, a fourth idea, which is a, now a difference, is that this uh, momentum is a vector. It's made up of vectors, right? Equals mv. And so your velocity is a vector. Whereas your work over here is mainly made up of scalars okay the energy law involves scalars all right okay now let's quickly look at 15 in what sense is a crate a particle remember we defined a particle uh, under what circumstances would it be inappropriate to treat a crate as a particle in working a physics problem now the basic idea again is that when you when you consider something to be a particle what you're really saying is that there's no change in its internal energy so even though a particle does have a, a size right it has an extent in space if this crate has a force applied to it and and there's no change in its shape right or no noticeable change in its shape. That means there's no change in its internal energy. Right? 
Remember, how do you change the internal energy? You either change the shape or you change its temperature. Those are the basic ideas of changing your internal energy. So if you can't change the shape, then, um, then you can approximate it as a particle. Whereas if in a collision this crate crashes into a wall and it crumples near one end, then you cannot treat it as a particle. Okay? Alright. See you in the next one.